shop. I appreciate your time. This video is uh, kind of uh, entertainment and uh, maybe educational for other guys that are starting out in the trade. I thought I'd just show some tools that I have built over the years for myself. One, this was a fun one. Uh, this is a uh, tap follower for the lathe. There's your mandrel that would go in the drill chuck in the lathe. And I made it so that it was two-sided. One side would hold my round dies, and the other side would hold my hex dies. And this was a fun one. Uh, when I got my MILF trying to figure out how to cut the hex using the rotary table, uh, it was a great education for me to learn. Uh, I also put flats on it for a wrench so that you can actually turn it with a wrench. Um, a mistake I made one time, I tried to add the lathe in back gear, add the wrench on it, hit go, and I didn't have enough strength to hold it. And uh, off the wrench went and learned never to do that again. So I thought I'd mention that to you. But uh, this was a very fun project and it's a good one for uh, guys starting out uh, to build and very useful on your, uh, on your lathe. Now my wife decided to go blow leaves. You probably hear that in the background. I guess we're going to stop. Okay, I think she's uh, stopped blowing leaves. I'm going to stick on lathe items first. Um, these guys, they're spiders. Um, these spiders are for the uh, headstock on my lathe, but on the opposite side of the chuck. So when you have a long part, uh, you, can, you can control the whip. Very good uh, add-on to make for your lathe. Um, I made this one and I did it in three. Uh, don't do three. Go four. <laughs> three is much harder to center up. Um, this one actually fits. Uh, it's specially made for my closing um, to adapt onto the... Uh, mm, I forget what it adapts onto been a while since I've used it. But anyway, uh, spiders, very uh, fun little project to make and very, very helpful. Still on the lathe, um, four jaw chucks. Well, when I was starting out, uh, you'd watch guys rip around on those four jaw chucks and move them. And reading articles, uh, they said, hey, make two. Make two chuck keys. Make a little one for the backside when you're reaching over the uh, machine and then you can tighten and push, loosen and push at the same time. Good project to make. Um, you can see I, I wrapped tape on these because they were cutting into my hand. These were made a long time ago and you can see they weren't hardened or anything. Uh, but uh, a good little project to make. Uh, double chuck keys for guys that are just learning on how to adjust four jaw chucks. Um, good project. Still sticking with the lathe. Um, build yourself a tap follower. This one uh, is a Morris Taper 3, I think, I made for my closing lathe. It's a fun little project to make. You get to cut a taper. Uh, you can see the, uh, the uh, piece that was pressed in there to hold it all together. Um, and it looks like I put a through hole through it so I could take it apart. It's got the tang to catch. Um, Fun little project and a good one to uh, work on your skills and uh, get started in machining. A lot of these things I, I saw in home shop, uh, the Home Shop uh, magazines. Now this one, this was, uh, I made this for my closing. And uh, as you can see, there's a dovetail there. And this piece right here uh, attaches to my cross slide. And then this attaches to the cross slide dovetail. And then there's a nut on the back. And this one, I used to watch guys thread. And they would take and back the cross slide out and go back into zero. Back it out, go back into zero. Well, when I would thread, I would back out the cross slide and I'd go, oh, how much? Did I go one turn or did I go two turns? <laughs> It was driving me nuts because I can't, I couldn't concentrate on it because I was so worried about pulling, pulling out and not crashing. So this made it simplistic. Basically, once you set it and you have the nut, it backs out, goes back into the same spot. Backs out, goes back to the same spot as you crank it in. 
So for guys that are uh, having problems with uh, uh, threading and, and the adjustment, uh, it's a good little project to build for your lathe. There's a lot of different ways to adapt these on your lathe. Uh, so I thought I would show that. It was a fun little build and very helpful, uh, I, got, I got to admit. Um, that's it for the lathe. Now, one of my earliest projects I built um, was a uh, height stand. And uh, this was, and later on I added the radius for, for testing square. But this was a copy out of a home shop um, magazine or a machinist magazine. And uh, it was very, very early on when I got my, uh, my mill. Uh, fun project, uh, a very simple project to actually build. It's not that difficult. And uh, I would suggest, guys, if you're starting out in the trade uh, as a hobby, uh, it's a useful tool. You use it all the time for various things. Uh, you can see I added the Noga to it for uh, checking square. Good project. Okay, another one of my very early projects was, was this guy right here. And uh, it was for crimping battery terminals. And again, it was a project to uh, use the, the mill and the lathe, teaching myself. And uh, uh, I must have saw the design in a magazine. And uh, it was a very fun project and basically built it all out of scrap. Um, so just, just a project that you can build. I thought I would show it to you. Did it, I, I've used it a few times over the years. This project, uh, a center drill jig, um, this was uh, something I found on the web and copied. I'd shown this in the past, but basically you make your bushings. I've got extra bushings in there, and you have the V-block. You have the V-block, and then you have the top piece. And when this is in place, and you put a, a bushing in it, it's going to drill center. It's going to drill center, and it can go th this way, or it can go this way. So it can go two ways. So you can actually hold a fairly, fairly large round in it. It was, uh, again, another really fun project to build. Um, I've used it in the past uh, for center drilling, um, and uh, thought I would show that to you. It was it was a fun, very fun project to build. I didn't I did not build the box. Okay, and moving on, um, another little project I built for myself. I I, I really enjoy building tools for my shop. Uh, one, teaching myself as I tried to improve in the uh, machinist uh, hobby. And this one, of course, is for uh, uh, welding. A little, little weight. You can slide the weight up for more weight. It's just a third finger for welding. Put a couple of uh, balls on the back side of it. Um, just a fun little project. A little TIG welding practice. Um, and uh, not too good on the neural. But uh, another, another fun little project, and you can build them in uh, various sizes and ways. Um, this one, I don't think I built this one, to be honest with you. I think I bought it, but I thought I'd show it. Chamfering tool on a speed handle. And this, is, uh, this has been super handy. Just real quick, it's hanging by my mill. A lot of times take stuff off. Sure, you can put a chamfering bit in a drill, an electric drill, but then you're changing them in and out. It's just a dedicated tool, something you can pick up at the flea market, a couple bucks for the speed handle, uh, put the chamfer on it, you know, make, make the uh, holder for it, and uh, you got a nice little tool in the shop. Another tool, these are the last couple, uh, finish it here. This was a fun build. Um, this is a little copper hammer that I made. Now, this piece, uh, if you can imagine, it was basically, this isn't it, but it was a round disc of copper that I had. And so it was a real challenge to uh, actually make this out of just a round piece. 
and uh, put it in the lathe and, and uh, do all the work, the mill and the lathe, and then build the handle uh, on the lathe also. Fun little tool, and it's been, you can see it's been used. It's, it's got the little beak that you can reach in and tap things. Another little good project to build. There's how we just arrived. And then the, the last one, uh, the crank yanker. You can buy these. And uh, this is where you put a drill motor on it and you can raise and lower your mill table. And this was uh, a project I still can remember back in the day, uh, sitting there in the living room uh, in the evening uh, with the machinist manual. Uh, this is actually called a clutch is what it's actually designed as. And trying to figure out how you cut this. And although it looks difficult, it's very, very simple because you can make straight cuts through. Um, the, uh, my initial one that I made, this was a round body. And then uh, over Tom Lipton's one day, I noticed his, he had a hex on it. And he says, yeah, he goes, every now and then, you know, you, you run up, but now you just want to move it a little bit. Rather than trying to hit it with the, the, the trigger, you just take the wrench and move it a little bit. Fun project. Um, uh, I really enjoyed making it, and uh, it's a good little challenge. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the little uh, review of tools that I've built over the years uh, in, in my quest to become better. <laughs> it's, it's quite a challenge. I really enjoy the uh, hobby and uh, enjoy sharing what I learn and what I buy. Of course, I buy quite a bit of tools. And uh, I'll have you back again. Again, thanks for your time for stopping by the shop. I appreciate it. As always, I uh, hope you uh, share the video. Uh, comments are welcome. Uh, it's a great learning source for everybody. And uh, see you soon. Take care.